We're back at Coldwater at Veterans Field. It is district semifinal night. Parkway Panthers, Fort Recovery Indians are presenting the sponsor this evening. Is Lee's famous recipe chicken and lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. On the mound for the uh, Fort Recovery Indians today will be Alex Dews. He is 5-3 and three on the season in 53 and two-thirds innings. He's given up 37 hits. He's walked 24. He has 57 strikeouts. He has hit seven batters on the season. His ERA is 1.83. Kind of a sidearm fastballer type guy, Garrett, type of guy you don't see a lot of. No, and when you take a look at um, both Trent Rollins and Alex Deuce today on the, on the bump for Fort Recovery and Parkway, a couple of uh, pitchers that have a lot of experience and uh, aren't really going to be phased by uh, by an atmosphere where you get uh, maybe a few more folks in the stands, a few few, uh, few more folks in the outfield bleachers and uh, lawn chairs on the outfield that, uh, than you're used to, but uh, have played at a time that you're not used to. Not many games to start after 5 o'clock throughout the high school baseball season, and here we are about to take first pitch at 7.51. The Fort Recovery Indians and Kevin Ike's team, they are 10 and 12 on the season. They were 4 and 5 in, in uh, MAC play. The Parkway Panthers, Neil Schefter's team is 8 and 12. They were 2 and 7 in the MAC this year. Studying the defense, we looked around. Riggs Toby will be the catcher. Caden Greasy will be at third, Alex Garkey at short, Sage Wendell will be at second, Gavin Faller is at first, left, right, left, center, right is Wendell, Reese, Troy Holman, and Reese Evers. And in will be Apollo Thomas for Parkway, he hits 292 on the season. First pitch ball from Dews. That's a little different than that sidearm thing he was tossing up there in uh, in warm -ups. Yeah. But also is a ball. Two and up. Really one of the interesting things, Mark, when you take a look at these two teams, neither one all that great at home and much better on the road. Four recovery, three and eight at home on the season. Parkway two and seven. Indians seven and four on the on the road and Parkway six and six. So the bulk of their wins coming away from their home fields. Nobody gets a real advantage when they go to a neutral site here in Coldwater. It's a 3-0 count on the opening hitter. And there's a strike. Three and one from Dews. Paulo Thomas plays left field for Parkway. And comes back to make the 3-2 count. Parkway in there. Black uniform tops with grayish pants. Got a little gold trim to it. Parkway, of course, purple and white today. Or excuse me, for recovery, purple and white today. That ball's hit up in the air. And who's going to make a play on it? Looks like the first baseman, Kevin Fowler, will haul it in. And we get a first out. A little bit of communication issues there, Gary. Yeah, well, and you're in a tough spot where you're right in the in the baseline, yeah. so the runners, you got two fielders coming together, you got a runner trying to avoid the situation. Uh, luckily for Fort Recovery, he didn't come up in, in disaster there at the first batter of the game. Devin Crouch will step in, hits 196 on the season. You know, a lot of times, Garrett, you say, well, the pitcher shouldn't field the ball, but in high school baseball, your pitcher oftentimes your oh, best yeah. athlete, Absolutely. so let, let, him, let him go get it. Left-handed hitting Crouch, second baseman, or excuse me, the uh, shortstop today. Yeah, very rarely are you thinking uh, my first baseman's a better athlete than, than, than my starting pitcher. <laughs> yeah. Especially in the district semifinals here. Sun's a bit of a problem in right field. Will be for another half inning or two, perhaps. Lights are turned on here yep. at uh, Memorial Park, ready for the sun to eventually go down. So the right fielder going to ha have to shade himself with his hand on his hat for just a little bit for now. There's that sidearm pitch. Makes it two and two. Winners come back here on uh, Friday. And, you know, Gary, you talk about the lights. A lot of districts are, today were at uh, 2 o'clock and yeah. 5 o'clock. But with the lights here and this wonderful field here at the Veterans Field in Coldwater, able to play a little later. That ball's lined right to the shortstop. And the play is made by Garkey. Stung it well, but hit it right to the shortstop. That will bring in Jacoby Triplett, the right fielder. It's 262. Yes. 
That ball's hit to right field, and let's see, hey, maybe we'll make a play, and in the sun is Reese Evers. He tracks it down out there. It's a one, two, three inning for Parkway. Fort Recovery coming to bat. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. Fort Recovery coming to bat here in the bottom of the first. Our scoreboard sponsor today is Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We appreciate their support tonight. On the mound will be Trent Rollins. His defense will set up this way. Colton Hunter will be the catcher. Caden Berry plays third. Devin Crouch is the shortstop. Xavier Samples is at second base. The first baseman is Braxton Four of the outfield, left, center, and right. Apollo Thomas, Fletcher Smith, and Jacoby Triplett. And that will be Trent Rollins. Fort recovery will go with Troy Holman, Wendell Reese, and Caden Holman here in the opening at bat for them. Indians not afraid to swipe some bags if they can get some guys on board. A couple of guys. Troy Homer with nine stolen bases. Reese Wendell with 13 stolen bases. Alex Dews with 10. So they've got some guys with some wheels. If they can get them, get them on, they're, they're not afraid or worried about whether they can get them over. Yeah, they hit just 215 on the season, but they do steal about three bases per game. And the average four and a half runs scored per game as the left-handed hitting Troy Holman steps in. He is the center fielder against Trent Rollins. Breaking ball is a first pitch ball. Interesting choice there with the, the first pitch of the game, breaking ball. Don't maybe want to reveal the fastball too early, but to go off speed there, interesting choice. The pitch was behind him, goes 2-0 and as the count. Well, must have, it was, must uh, have stared at a home run the last time these two faced off. It was 83 degrees when we opened up game <laughs> one. It is 75 now as we're approaching 8 p.m. And the wind has died down significantly. Mix it two and one on that pitch. 335 down the left field line, 380 to center, 315 down right field line. So a lot of room for the outfielders here, Coldwater. Balls hit hard and hit fouls. It pulled down the right field line. Levels the count at 2-2. That was well struck just a little early there for Troy Holman, but uh, turned on it really quickly. Center fielder steps back in. That ball's hit hard and in a similar position down the right field line. And so it puts Rollins in a bit of a tough spot here. Do I do I try to stay off speed and let him be early? Do I if I if I go back to the fastball, he's I'll see if I can blow one by him, but you got a couple of options here. Breaking ball is high. It's 3-2. We go full on the first batter for Trent Rollins today. And we're gonna time. I think Holman wanted to just step out there and reset just for a moment, regather, knowing that it's a full count here, 3-2. And Rollins pitches a bit inside. He didn't miss by much, but he did miss. So the opening batter for the foot recovery Indians walks in the position of Troy Holman, who has nine steals on this year. And the left fielder, Reese Wendell, will step in with his 339 average. Yeah, Wendell wearing number 99, which is one of the more rare, rare high school baseball number, numbers you'll see. First pitch strike after walking Holman. Ball pitched over to first base. Ford makes the stab at it had to go off the bag to get the ball yeah Holman as we mentioned a threat to run pretty good lead and there he goes balls hit high to left field the left fielder Thomas stumbled a bit but tracks it down and that will require Wendell or Wendell Reese to be out and Holman to go back to first base Caden Holman will step in he's the designated hitter today he hits for Sage Wendell Caden 196 hitter on the season, but has 12 RBIs from his third, third spot in the batting order. Outside. 
Let's take a look at Coach Ike down there looking for signals. See if we put a play on. Holman was running on that fly ball to left. Strike at the top of the zone. One and one. Nice job by Rollins to come back there with the breaking ball. Hadn't officially really located it well over the zone in the first two batters, but gets that one over for a strike to even the count. Running again. Here's the throw to second. Head first slide, and he made it. Stolen base for Holman. His 10th of the season. The pitch was called a ball, so it's two and one. We saw it in the first game, the first inning, all important. Get your runners on and see if you can't get, kind of break that seal early and start to build some momentum for later innings. Three and one is the count on Holman. Alex Garkey is on deck. And time called. Kate Holman plays in center field for Fort Recovery. That ball's hit up in the air. Second baseman's making a play on Samples and has to reach back and grab that one, but he does make the play. Xavier Samples does. So pop up on the infield becomes the second out, and Garkey will step in with his 219 average. It's still, that's a tough, tougher than pe play than people think. It's the, the high sky. You're still kind of just barely into the sun over there and getting a read off of it, but then also having to take maybe a step back at the last moment, catching it above your head. Always feels a little bit uh, on the wild side, on the dangerous side. Rollins with a runner on second, trying to get out of the inning. Breaking ball's hit up in the air. Foul. You have the feeling, Jared, as we kind of talked in the pregame, this could well be a low-scoring matchup. It was 1-0 early in the season. Both of these teams had a little trouble putting offense together, and both pitching staffs are pretty good. Curveball stays high. It's 1-1. One one. To the shortstop, Alex Garkey. Caden Greasy on deck, the third baseman. Still that runner at second that Rollins paying a lot of attention to, knowing that he's a threat to steal. First, first base is open for the 219 hitting Garkey. Should he chose to choose to go that way and kind of pitch around him a bit? Three and one. Parkway playing a little bit with house money here in the district tournament. Mm. It wins over two teams that I would say most people didn't expect them to, to get wins over in New Bremen and St. Henry. Uh, and, and kind of blew this district wide open where you get a six versus nine matchup in the district semis. That ball's hit hard to left field. Thomas tracking it down and got it as he went up the terrace. That was a tough catch out inside the 348 side, not just to, to go after the ball, Garrett, but to go up the terrace to get it. Yeah, walking up that hill is a difficult play, and he made it look relatively easy, ranging back over his shoulder, but that, that starts to work, work its way up the hill. That, that's a tough play to make. So Fort Recovery needs a runner on his second. We'll go to the top of the second. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball, WOSN. To the top of second we go here at Coldwater. Parkway will send up hitters four, five, and six. That would be Braxton Ford, Caden Berry, and Xavier Samples. Garrett gave you a little bit of information about where we got to or how we got to this particular point. Fort Recovery ended up with a 5-2 win over Waynesfield in their sectional opening game. Then they come back and defeated the number two seed at Crestview Knights, 2-1. to one to get to this district semifinal match. Breaking balls tapped up in the air. Center field of Troy Holman has the first pitch out. Yeah, Holman didn't have to hardly move. It flew right to him where he took one step up and a half step over, but he was perfectly positioned for that ball hit from Braxton Ford. So the number six seed in Fort Recovery has defeated number 11 seed of Waynesfield and the number two seed of Crest Unites Parkway came in as the ninth seed. They defeated the seventh seed New Bremen 10 to one. And then they upset the number five seed St. Henry team seven to five and again to get to this district as we get a first pitch ball. 
And really, for St. Harry to be even be the, the number five mm -hmm. seed in this district, uh, that shows you the, how difficult it, it, the the quality of teams is in this district. Caden Berry, the third baseman, hitting 219, steps in to hit second in this inning. He takes a, up the count to one and one. It's that sidearm breaking ball that stayed inside. It's 2-1. Hasn't been able to put it over the plate just yet. It does tip the hitter off just a little bit when you see the complete arm change angle there, but also can throw you off guard a little bit. Ball slapped to the second baseman. Wendell makes the pick up and throw. Two outs. Xavier Samples at 212 will step in. He's the second baseman. Xavier is a left-handed hitter. Don't see many lefties in the high school baseball ranks. Throws the pitcher off maybe just a little bit. Fastball inside. They play him to pull. Center fielder Holman Troy is way over into right center. Second pitch is a strike. It's one of one. Yeah, on that first base or first base side of second base. So big gap there in the left center alley. If Sample can put one there. Breaking ball and he snapped that one off for a strike two. It's one and two is the count. Fletcher Smith is on deck, the center fielder. Here's that drop down sidearm pitch that stays outside. Two and two. Just a little different arm slot. Garrett, give you something else to look at as a hitter. Change that eye. Breaking balls, that's outside. So we'll go to full count. Dues four and three on the season. 13 earned runs, so a 1.95 ERA coming into today. That ball's hit up the middle. Ranging over to get us to shortstop Garkey and got him at first base on a play by Alex Garkey. The first six Panthers have gone down in order. We go to the bottom of the second. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball, WOSA. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. To the bottom of the second we go. That'll be Caden Greasy, Gavin Fowler, and Reese Evers for the Fort Recovery Indians against Trent Rollins. Swings through the first pitch for a strike. Rollins for 17 pitches back in the first inning. Faced four hitters, two of them first pitch strikes, two of them first pitch balls. 172 for Greasy on the season. Ball's hit foul. 0 oh, and 2 is the count. You know, Garrett, uh, if you don't play a lot of baseball games with this time frame, it's, a, it's not yeah. quite late enough for the lights to make a huge difference, but yet it's not dark either. It's, a, it's an odd time, and I think, uh, let's look at Wallace's third pitch here the inning, and that's inside for a ball. Uh, it used to be coaches would say in this type of situation you keep the ball low, keep it down where the the eyes of the hitter can't mm -hmm. find it as easily until the you know, lights kind of kick in a little bit. Let's see how both uh, pitchers uh, use that at this particular time of the game. There's a breaking ball that's hit hard foul. Yeah, really, the, I don't know if the only thing you can really equate this kind of view as a hitter is maybe like those early season mm -hmm. morning workouts in the gym where they have the lights haven't completely turned all the way on yet, but it's completely different than they've played all season. Breaking balls hit to right field. That's in the gap. But a running catch out there. Nice play by Jacoby Trippett. The ball hung up there long enough for him to make a play. That's a nice run and play there by Jacoby Triplett. It, you, you were right, Mark. It, it was in the gap, and it was headed right towards that 345 sign out there in right center field, and he just kept ranging over to his right and made the play. You know, in the opening game with the wind blowing in that direction, that might have got to the fence, but not that time. That, that kind of died when it got out there, but still a really nice catch, and stepping in will be Gavin Fowler, a 254 hitter. Takes a ball on the first pitch. You mentioned keep uh, keep the ball down. Breaking balls inside. 2-0. Four consecutive flyouts recorded yeah. here by Trent Rollins. Three of the four fine in the outfield. That ball's hit hard. This time down the left field line. And it's 
He catched what up. A what a catch. What a play by Apollo, Apollo Thomas. Thomas. Ran that one down but in front of the 335 sign. That ball was stung also and kind of had to reach back to make a play on it. And that's the third put out Apollo Thomas has made out there in left field. One, he's running up the hill the, with the runner on second base that probably scores if he doesn't catch it. That one's straight down the left field line, ranging all the way to the foul pole. Just stuck his glove up and the ball found it. Reese Evers, a 212 hitter, will step in the third batter of the inning. Those are two balls that could well have been doubles, you know, with a little bit of less defensive effort. Instead, they're two outs. Yeah, it, a lot of other parks, those are off the wall, off the, off the fence, or over the fence in some cases. Two and O's to count to Evers. Breaking ball, he timed that one up. That stung out there. And the very busy Apollo Thomas makes yet another play. We're scoreless as we go to the top of the third. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. Alex Dews back to the hill for his third inning of work. Our scoreboard sponsor today is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And we are scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second. Oh, excuse me, top of the third. That'll bring Fletcher Smith, Colton Harner, and Ben Bates to bat for Parkway. Fletcher Smith hits 245 on the season. That one bounces up there, first pitch ball. Dews has been incredibly efficient here in the, the first two innings. 12 pitches back in the first, mm. 10 pitches in the second. So he's at 22 through two pit, through two innings. That ball's hit the left field. Tracking it down is Weiss Rendell. Rendell Weiss makes a play on it. Getting some balls stung here, Garrett. Yeah, that left field has been an active one. Uh, maybe the ball is being, uh, maybe it's a little easier to see that ball here in the nighttime uh, action than earlier in the day. But yeah, a couple of balls hit in smoke so far here through the first two and two plus innings. The designated hitter, Colton Harner, will step in. He hits for the pitcher, Trent Rollins. And the left hander takes. A breaking pitch for a ball. Harner not on our roster. Not sure if that's an omission or if that's a, a late season call up to play that catcher spot. That's all important. That pitch is also a ball. Two and oh is the count. And three and oh the ball stays high. Harner hits 194. That'll make it three and one. It's a nice job by Deuce to just mm -hmm. battle back and get a fastball over the plate to kind of get that rhythm going once again. This is the eighth hitter in the order. Foul ball makes it full count. On deck is Ben Bates, the designated hitter. See that stance towards the outside of the batter's box forces you to step in. That will be. A walk, the first walk given up. In fact, the first batter to reach that Alex Dews has put on today. And Bates will step in a 205 hitter. That's a nice job by Harner. Uh, good plate discipline there, especially on a 3 2 pitch. You feel like you're going to get something to hit. And instead of being antsy, ready to swing at anything, he watched that pitch down at the shoelaces, really, and, and gets a, a base runner aboard for the Panthers. See Harner. That ball's hit and the sliding is playing. Unable to make the play at second base, though, is Sage Wendell. I'm going to call that a hit, Garrett. Let's see what they put. Yeah, they put hit on the board. Yeah, he I, made an effort for it, but I couldn't just, track it down. That's a diving play yep. in the dirt. Ball goes off the heel of your glove. I don't, I don't think that's an outlandish call to call that a hit in the slightest. Well, I'm just thinking back to game one, Garrett, that all seven runs scored by the Marion local Flyers were by hitters six, seven, eight, and nine. Yep. And now here is hitter number eight and hitter number nine have gotten on base for Parkway as they go back to the top of the order, Apollo Thomas. Apollo Thomas has been busy out in left field in the field, so uh, hopefully saved a little energy to come up to a plate here. He hit one up in the air to the first baseman as the first batter of the game. That ball's hit to the shortstop and under his glove. Here's the play. Reese going to make a throw home, and he dropped the he ball. Dropped the baseball. Yep. Came out of his glove on the tag. 
runners. And the runners move up. It was an odd line throw from Reese Wendell. And I don't know if Riggs Toby's shaking off a injured hand, but he's, we're going to check him out. He had the ball well in advance of, of Colt Harder, who came home. Now we'll check on Toby. That ball was stung and hit hard enough that Wend uh, Reese Wend uh, Wendell Reese could make the play on it. Reese Wendell, I'll get it yeah, right yet, yeah, Garrett. <laughs> you know what they did? They put their lineup yes, in. Yes, last, uh, last name first. Last name yeah. first, and I, I copied it down wrong, so I will apologize there. But um, the point is that, that the ball was hit hard enough. He had a chance to make a play and did make a really good throw, but the slide knocked the ball out, and it becomes an, an error on the catcher. So he'll be checked out by the athletic trainer here. It is one nothing, Panthers. Boy, you wouldn't want to lose your catcher in a district semifinal oh, no, matchup. And he, he would have to be, I, I assume, awful binged up, awful beat up to consider coming out of the game. But just the way the throw came in, the way the runner came in, the way he had the attack applied and lost the ball tells you that maybe there was some stretching going on there that you don't want to feel if you're the catcher. You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8. You can download the Roku or Apple app or sign in at app.wsn.tv. We're going to let him catch a couple balls here from Alex Deuce. Both sides have really put some charges into some balls here in early going. And uh, Parkway's just been able to find us at the green grass where four recoveries hit a couple of balls that the Panthers have had to range back on or make running catches where Parkway's just stung some balls up the middle and able to get some guys on, get them over, and got them in. Well, hopefully, looks like Toby's all right. Toby will be able to continue. The left handed hitting Devin Crouch will step in. This team's up 1 0. And there is one out here with runners on second and third. The, despite the fact, you know, that we, we talked about the injury, that ball was stung oh, off, absolutely. off the bat of Thomas. Well, and, and Crouch hit a ball in the last inning that was hit as hard as you could hit it right mm -hmm. at the shortstop. That ball's hit to the shortstop again. Here's the play at the plate, and the throw pulls him wide. So a fielder's choice in an RBI. And the throw was offline, and that allowed Ben Bates to score from from second uh, from third base and also move Apollo Thomas to third. And now Kevin Ike wants to chat with Alex Deuce and the infield as a whole here, where you're down 2 nothing now after a couple of well-struck balls. And really, the Panthers' beneficiary of uh, runners being on base, the, the hit that that uh, Ben Bates had is right where the shortstop would be if yeah. he's not covering the bag. Yeah, it's, it's just a... Yeah, he was trying to hold the runner on at the second base, the runner being Harner. And that was hit pretty much where he would have made a play on it. And if you... The the first run that scores for Harner is a is a great throw. Mm. Th that play, if that's if it's a as good of a throw <laughs> to, to home, uh, Riggs Toby's prepared and ready. It, it, the throw was ready to beat Ben Bates by a mile. Uh, just pulled him up the first baseline, and it, it allows him to dive in head first. Really, was not even a play. Here's Jacoby Triplett to hit 262 hitter. He lined out to the right fielder back in uh, inning number one to bring that inning to an end. And let's see with. Runners on first and third if there's a play in the mind of Coach Neil Schaffner. Despite the advantages for Parkway here, it's still just the 10th pitch of the inning. Ball's fouled away. So the 11th pitch of the inning thrown there by Dews, despite this being the, the six batteries facing. Braxton Ford is on deck. 2-0 Parkway here in the top of the third. As their number eight and number nine hitters have scored in this inning. That ball gets away on a wild pitch. Not far enough for the runner Thomas to score, but enough for Crouch to move up to second base. Thomas thought about it down there in third and 
gave a little bit more urgency for, for Rick Stobie to go chase down that ball just because he didn't want to have to worry about whether there's a play at the plate or not. Toby's had a tough inning. That ball bounced yes, off sir. of him right there, too, and when it was in the dirt. Here's Dews with runners on second, third. That ball's hit right to the first baseman. Got a line drive there, and it's thrown away. First baseman tried to make a play, and instead we're going to get a score by Apollo Thomas from third base. It's 3-0 Parkway. Might have had obstruction called anyway, so mm. I think we are going to get a run from the Panthers no matter what. So a line drive out from Jacoby Triplett. And then the error, the second of the inning, that allows Thomas to score from third base and also moved up Devin Crouch to third as Braxton Ford steps in. Yeah, Gavin Fowler, a great play to make that catch. First pitch ball. Is that ball, was, it was stung mm. right at him. I uh, just couldn't get an accurate throw down to third base on a maybe a bit ambitious play, but nonetheless, it's a 3 nothing lead. 2-0. Oh. Well, Garrett, there are errors of omission and errors of commission. And I would, uh, that ball's hit up in the air. Drifting over his Fowler. Does he have room? Uh, just he just went not, over his yeah. right shoulder there. He, had to worry about running up against the fence there. Yep. And you know, those errors of commission. When you have a guy you should make a play on and you don't, that time it was an error of commission. He made an effort to get a guy who was off the bag a little bit. The throw just didn't go the way he wanted it to go. Two and one's the count after the foul ball. That ball's hit foul as well. Two and two. Just missed the bus. Garrett and I have an over and under today on how many bus windows will get broken. We are currently uh, at zero, but we've had some shots. Here's a side arm bitch, and he waves at it and missed. So a swing, swinging strikeout will end inning number three, but it's a good one for Parkway as they will take a three to nothing lead to the bottom of inning number three. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. Trent Rollins back to the hill for inning number three of work for him today. He just does so with a three to nothing lead thanks to his team putting three on the board in the opening inning, uh, the opening of the third inning. Rick's Toby, number eight, Alex Dews, number nine, and then back to the top of the order, and Troy Holman will hit for the Fort Recovery Indians. Well, eight and nine, putting points on the board, runs on the board yep. for Parkway. Let's see what happens for Fort Recovery. And here's a first pitch strike from Rollins. Rollins, after walking the first hitter of the game, has recorded six consecutive outs all by the flyout, keeping his outfielders active, but really settling down there at the later stage of the first and second hit. That pitch is outside. We'll make it one on one. Toby hits 150 on the season. Alex, he plays, the, he is the catcher. He's had kind of a tough inning at the top of the third. Ball's hit foul. Might have been off the umpire's foot. I was going to say, I heard, I heard it go off somebody's yep. foot. You just, you, you know, hope it goes off the umpire. But for Riggs Toby in that top of the third inning, it was about as uh, much combat as you can take there behind home plate. Alex Dews, the pitcher, would be on deck. That ball's timed up the curveball, but way early on it. Hit it down into the bullpen area. So it'll stay at one and two. Rollins trying to throw that bender. It just didn't break all that much. It kind of stayed flat right at the handle. I think Toby expected to come back a little bit over the heart of the plate. One and two. The ball's hit to the third baseman. Greasy. And it's hit foul. And just hit the yep. chalk right in front of the bag. So we'll come back. Will Toby with a one-two count again after a couple of foul balls. Keaton Berry was ready over there at third base if that was going to stay fair. I don't know if he'd have been able to make the throw that far across the diamond, but he was tracking that ball as it was chopping to its way to him. Toby back in against Trent Rollins. Curveball's hit foul. 
Rollins has just a little bit of a unique windup where he starts with the ball kind of at the belt with his in his right hand and then puts it in his glove. So uh, maybe you can get a good look at the, the grip he's putting in the in the glove. That one's hit to the third baseman. Barry and Barry throws it out. So a ground ball out to start inning number three for the Fort Recovery Indians. Alex Dews to the plate. It's the first ground ball out recorded by the Panthers today. Yes, you're correct. Looking back over, pop up, fly out, fly, fly, fly. Yeah. Here's Dews. It's 234 on the season. Number nine man in batting order, and he will line it over the head of the shortstop, Crouch. And he will have the first hit of the day for Fort Recovery. And take us back to the top of the order, and Troy Holman, who walked with his first appearance. Yeah, we talked about it in the first game where you've seen a trend of, of coaches put uh, a pretty good hitter in that nine hall, hoping that they get on to set the table for somebody at the top of the lineup that you also feel pretty strong is going to have the ability to get on base and, and then have somebody in the two, three, four holes that's going to bring them in. Now, Alex Dews does have 10 stolen bases on the season. Doesn't have a very big lead, and that pitch is high. Holman, 255 batting average on the season. Nine RBIs. He scored 13 runs in his leadoff spot. The ball's low. 2 0. Deuce has increased the lead out down at first on that second pitch. Can't imagine a 2 0 count would be a count he's got the green light on. Pitch stays inside that time. It is 3-0. Fort Recovery needs runners. And they've got a chance here to put two on here in this top of the third. With Reese Wendell on deck, the 39 hitter. I don't think Holman was too worried about wearing that pitch if it came in on him. And that's a ball. So a four-pitch walk to Troy Holman. Puts runners on first and second. That's the second walk given up by Rollins. And here comes his coach to the mound. And the form of Neil Schaffner. This is a big inning for them. You know, you, you score three, you want to, want to throw a zero yeah. out there, get right back uh, in the dugout and get the bat swinging again. Instead, put a couple of guys on after an opening ground ball out. Wendell hits 339 on the season. Holman follows him. That would be Caden Holman will follow him. And you know, the Panthers come out here knowing the four recoveries motivated to get some runs back, and you know, maybe going to be a little bit more selective at the batter's box, wanting to drive up that pitch count for Trent Rollins, and uh, hadn't been able to put it over the plate there, especially in that four pitch walk to Troy Holman. But probably just getting told right now, hey, settle down here, let's throw the ball over the plate. We got a play at any base here in the infield. If we got a grounder to you, let's just play play smart baseball here with runners in scoring because it was runners on really. There, there is nobody in the bullpen so this was purely a defensive slash talk to the pitcher type conference. Get and the meat of the order coming up you just want to reiterate what we're focusing on here. That is right there's two three and four here in the, in the place face of Wendell as he steps in. Hit one of those balls to, to left field that has been tracked down today by Apollo Thomas. And he snaps off a curveball for a strike. That, it shows a lot of courage and faith in that curveball. If you throw a four-pitch walk and you come back with a breaking ball, it's the first pitch to a, a hitter with runners on first and second. But believe in that curveball, put it over the heart of the plate. 0 and 1. Fastball is low. That'll level the count at 1 1. Not a big lead at second base. Alex Dews. Pitches inside. It's two and one. Yeah, he's continually missed just inside with that pitch. Weary of throwing it over the heart of the plate, naturally. And that's outside. It's three and one. A walk would load the bases for Caden Holman. But likewise, a 3-1 pitch to a discipline, Reese Wendell. Panthers first baseman Braxton Ford now holding the runner on at first. That ball's grounded to third. 
And quick to make the play, and across the diamond goes Barry's throw. It's dug out by Braxton four, but they get the out at third. Got a good high hop. And that will be the second out of the inning. Well, the first one was also a ground ball that went to the third baseman, Barry. It's probably a smart play there for Caden Barry to just step on third. You have a, a dangerous runner coming your way at Alex Dews. Uh, I know you, you might think, like, hey, let's go 5-4-3 here, but instead just step on the base, make sure you get the, the surefire out. Alec Garkey steps in, 219 on the season for his batting average. He does have 10 RBIs, and he would love to get one right here. Of course, Trent Rollins would like to get out of this inning with another zero on the board. That ball's hit hard into the left field. And hit hard and hit hard. And this time it goes over the head of Apollo Thomas. One run scores. Two run scores on a two run double by Alex Garkey. That ball absolutely stung into the left field, left center gap. Just absolutely put a charge into it in the perfect spot. That was but that I, was Caden Holman. That was Caden Holman, yes. I apologize for that. I got my fielder's choice in the wrong spot, Garrett, and I will apologize for that. That's a two-run double for Holman. And we'll bring up Garkey here. He, he torched that ball. First pitch ball to Garkey. And he waved at a good breaking ball. One and one. Yeah, Rollins has gotten a lot better placement, a lot better command of that breaking ball here after the, the first inning where he's been able to put it right over the plate for a strike. It's three, and, uh, three to two is the score now. As pitch is wide, it's two and one. Ball bash mutual telephone scoreboard. Important inning, I think, for recovery. They got themselves back in the game after giving up three early on here in this inning. And that will make it 3-1. So dangerous here for Garkey. He hits one, uh, hits 219 on the season with 10 RBIs. Those were the 13th and 14th RBIs in the season for Caden Holman. That ball's hit hard and smoked right to Barry, and his throw across the diamond will be out number three, but it's a good inning for the Indians as they pick up two to go to the fourth. We're back at Veterans Field here at Coldwater. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics, and it will be three to two Parkway as we head to the fourth. Each team put runs on the board in inning number three. And back on the mound. Comes Alex Dews. And we talked about the potential for pitchers do low scoring game. 3 2 after 3. Peel down to first base. It's real ruled a no swing for Caden Berry, 219 hitter. He grounded out to the second baseman back in uh, the inning number two. Alex Dews back to the plate. Another breaking ball. This one's also wide. It's 2-0. Oh. Barry also made the play to end the bottom of the third inning there for Parkway where it was a well-struck ball and able to knock it down and make a strong throw across the diamond. Ball's hit to center field and it's going to fall. So Caden Barry gets his first hit. And that will bring in the second baseman, Xavier Samples. He grounded out to the shortstop to end inning number two. And the left-hander will step in. One run lead, one of the bunt players on here with a left-handed hitter up. Barry leads from first. Pretty good lead. And ball gets away. Yeah. Did he offer that? Nope, they called it a ball. There's a heads up play there by Caden Greasy where he was coming in to defend the bunt while nobody was covering third base as, as Barry walked around in second on the pass ball. 
and was able to retreat. And now Kevin Eich wants to come out and chat things over with his Indians defense. The runner on second base and nobody out. You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month. You can download Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv. Short meeting on the mound for Coach Ike. And Samples will step back in with his teammate Caden Berry at second base. Wonder what the discussion is of maybe if the bunt's still on. Mm -hmm. Do we, if it's if basically, hey, if it's hard back at you, look at third. Let's make sure we get it out somewhere here. Don't want to be runners on score, runners on the corners with nobody down. Well, the shortstop Garkey is very close to second base, so the wheel play is probably out. There's the bunt. It's up in the air. It's going to fall foul. Sometimes you get that shortstop covers third, and the, the second baseman covers first, and they come charging in from the corners and try to knock off that runner at third. But not from where Garkey's playing right now. You can get a pickoff move there as well. You convince the runner that something's up. That bunt's also down. That goes foul. Had a little bit too much spin on it. Just at the lip of the grass there down the third baseline. Wasn't able to get it between the lines. So the count goes to one and two on samples. Here at the top of the fourth, district semifinal matchup in Division Four from Coldwater's Veterans Field. Winner moves on to play Marion Local Friday night. It should be a fantastic matchup. That ball's hit to left field and on the line. Wendell gets it back into the infield quickly, but first two batters have reached here in inning number four for Parkway, both on singles, and that'll bring up Fletcher Smith, the center fielder, who flied out in inning number three. Fletcher Smith going to Ohio Dominican University, Division II, to play football for the Panthers. Played quarterback for the Parkway Panthers. And is the center fielder a 245 batter this season. The runners on first and third. See if it plays on here. A steal attempt or. Oh, there's a, a ball rolling behind home plate here from Panthers. Bullpen. Yeah, interesting. Dews is on the mound, giving up two straight hits. Nobody in his bullpen. I was going to say. And Parkway's got warming people up down there. Overhand fastball is a strike. Just one one. Just from sheer pitch count at this point, you start to wonder what uh, what the longevity of Dews' night looks like. But the Indians don't have anybody warming up, showing a lot of faith in him here with nobody down on the top of the fourth. Sidearm pitch stays inside. Two and one. Two and one count. If you want to run that guy at first base, this is a great time to do it. Leaning a little bit. He doesn't go. Said the ball's hit foul down the right field line. And we'll make it 2-2. Two -two. Fletcher Smith. Colton Harner's on deck. He walked last inning and scored the first run for Parkway. Ball's hit up in the air in center field. See if we're going to get a play at the plate. Tracking down is Holman. Here's the throw to the plate, and it's going to be safe from an RBI sack fly from Fletcher Smith. Just deep enough to get the run in on a head first slide from Caden Barry. And really, that's a, it's a pretty good throw by Troy Holman um, for being online. Just uh, didn't have enough arm on it, uh, and it, and to Fletcher Smith's credit. Got the ball just deep enough to get a sack fly and add to that Parkway lead. First run, first out of the inning, scores a run to make it 4-2. And the left-handed hitting Colton Harner steps in. Curveball strike. A lot of faith in that curveball from Dews there. A throw first pitch strike after 
needing to get an out here. A runner on second base. He waited on that one a long time and hugs the third baseline, but stays foul. 0 and 2 is the count. Number nine hitting Ben Bates is next. So 0 and, 0 and 2 is the count on Harner as he steps back in. With Garkey kind of covering second base there, there's a whole lot of room on the left side of the infield. Yeah, he's all the way on the first base side of second base. That curveball ball stayed outside. Parkway's been the beneficiary of, of Garkey playing that close to second base where they've had a couple of base hits where Garkey would normally be positioned. And struck him out swinging. Big out for Alex Dews as he gets his second strikeout of the game. And that will be the second out of the inning and will bring up Colton Harner. Excuse me, will bring up Ben Bates as Colton Harner was out on that particular strikeout. Bates hits 205 but had a single and scored a run back in inning number three. Designated hitter tonight. Sample still out of second base. Big breaking ball for a strike. And Deuces really came back hard in this fourth inning with that breaking ball, put it over the part of the plate, and it really just throws you off. If you're sitting first pitch pass ball, to see that big bender come at you, it really changes a whole lot of perspective for you. Deuce with a long hold this time. Yeah, nobody covering second yeah. base, so Samples can toy with him out there for a little bit. Sage Wendell, Alex Garkey playing games with him back there, finally steps out of the box. So Dews will step back on the hill. That ball's tapped to Dews. Alex makes the play, throws it to his first baseman follower. And the inning comes to an end on a ground out from the pitcher to the first baseman. But it's another good inning for the Parkway Panthers. They put one on the board. They will be up four to three as we head to the bottom of inning number four. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. We're back at Veterans Field here at Coldwater. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Garrett, it is approaching 9 p.m. Uh, <laughs> we went right through dinner time, and I'm reading this uh, KFC ad here. Or at least I must be chicken ad here. I'm going, oh, that's not good. No, you could I, you could convince me to uh, get about a, a nine-piece bucket at this point. Um, I'd put on a show for anybody to want to watch. <laughs> this is the third baseman. Caden Greasy steps in. Swings it to first pitch from Trent Rollins as we're in the bottom of the fourth. And that pitch is inside. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Not just fried chicken, at least, Mark. I know. The, the, the sides, biscuit. I, I tell everybody, Garrett, the reason you can tell I didn't write this because I didn't mention sweet tea. Oof. That ball's poked up in the air. And it's going to fall in the middle of nobody. Now, Fletcher Smith stumbled coming in on that ball. I don't know that he gets there. I think that's just a perfectly placed no man's land ball that uh, gets a leadoff, a leadoff hitter greasy aboard. What recovery are trying to get back the one at least and perhaps get more to tie this one up or take the lead as Kevin Fowler will step in. It's one of those outs that was tracked down by Apollo Thomas back in the early part of the game. Seven stolen bases for Greasy on the season. There's a strike. I'm trying to think of the number of KFCs or KFCs. I keep saying Lee's famous <laughs> recipe. I'll pass on the way home. I know I'll go by the Wapak one and the St. Mary's one, and the Lima one's not out of the question. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from hitting all three, <laughs> Mark. That, that, that could happen, you get too. A, you pull up and say you need a refill on a sweet tea at the second one. A refill on the third one. Yeah, and then be up all night. <laughs> so here's, here's Fowler stepping in. One strike is the count. Chilling mud. He does. And, and the steal attempt. There's a slide. And got him at second base. The throw from Colton Harmer to second base nails the attempted steal. And knock off that lead runner. The pitch was called a ball. 
And I think that uh, Pacquiao will take that in exchange for a, an out at second base. Yeah, that's a strong throw from Harder down to second base. I don't know if that's a, a missed sign or what, but it just didn't look like Greasy was completely dead set on sprinting down there, but got caught. And that ball's lined over the head of the third baseman, Barry. As he made a leaping stab for it, but that will be a hit. That's a strong ball swung on by Fowler. And for Barry to even climb the ladder to have a chance to get that play shows some strong athleticism down there, but that's a well-struck baseball by Fowler. Here's Reese Evers to step in. He had a fly ball to left field back in inning number two. Back-to-back -back hits, but they caught stealing. This ball's going to be dribbled towards the second baseman. Samples with a pickup. Got him. I thought when Samples decided to play that with the glove instead of the bare hand that that took any chance of him getting that out. That's a, that's a nice play there from second base. He got to charge that ball hard and did just that. That'll be the second out of the inning and bring Reese Toby to bat. Get a ground ball to the third baseman in his only plate appearance today. It did move Fowler up to second base, put him in scoring position. That ball's hit high in the air. The third baseman, Barry, is going to go over and track it down in foul territory. And Parkway gets out of a two-hit inning from Fort Recovery. Going to the fifth. You're watching high school tournament baseball on WOSN. To the top of the fifth inning we go, and the Parkway Panthers come calling against Alex Dews, the Apollo Thomas, Devin Crouch, and Jacoby Triplett. One, two, three in the order. Thomas is one for two today. He singled and scored a run back in the third inning. A busy day today in left field has Apollo. Waves a slide arm breaking ball. Yeah, just a little bit late on it. Probably picked up that he knows what's coming when he's going to work with, when Deuce is going to work with that arm slot and just a little bit late on it. Same pitch is hit foul. And we'll go over the dugout. And we're near the bus. Nope. Uh, just a little shy of the bus. Oh, and two is the count to the leadoff hitter, Apollo Thomas. 292 on the season for him. Got him on a call, strike three. Put that breaking ball, that sidearm breaking ball in the outside corner. That's the third strikeout today for Alex Dews. I told you Thomas swung it the first two pitches that he went with the Dews went with the sidearm delivery. Didn't swing at the third, and that's the one that got him. It's the first one that's been a call to strike three as Devin Crouch steps in. Devin's 0 for 2 today, but hit the ball harder than the shortstop once. And will be hit down the left field line and foul. Puckway with the three in the third, one in the fourth for their four runs. That recovery put two on the board in inning number three. And that's where we stand now here in the top of the fifth. Sidearm foul again. It's going to that pitch a lot here this yep. inning, Garrett. I wonder if there was maybe a discussion of, hey, they're, they're, they're sitting fastball, they're hitting the fastball, maybe work a little bit more off speed, and if it causes you to throw some more pitches, you're probably not going to get to the end of this thing anyway. Let's get what we can out of you here and get some outs. So we're going to have a little discussion here with our home plate umpire and Mr. Dews. He had a baseball I didn't like there. Yeah, looked like neither one of them really. So Crouch will step back in with an 0-2 count. Short stop today. That ball's hit foul also. Devin Crouch, Caden Berry, both going to go to Defiance College, play baseball for the Yellow Jackets. Curveball is outside. One and two is the count. Of course, Defiance moving from Division Three to NAIA. Next year they'll be playing UNOH and have a chance to see them locally. That ball is also outside. It's two and two.
And for the first time, we're getting a little action down. There's a ball hit down the left field line. A long run, but it's going to go foul. Tailing foul. Reese Wendell was chasing it down out there, but sliced away from him. A little activity in the Fort Recovery bullpen as we're in the fifth inning. Crouch, 196 on the season, steps back in. That ball's hit up the middle, past the pitcher. Here's the second baseman, Wendell, and the ball gets away. And the second base, and cruising in there in a hurry is Devin Crouch. Official score says it's an error. Error. And the speedy Devin Crouch ends up at second base. Here's Triplett coming in to hit. The right fielder, Jacoby, 262 on the season. He's lined out to the first baseman and lined out to the right fielder today. He's hit the ball hard and didn't have anything to show for it. Big slow overhand breaking ball that he swang through that time. That's a nice breaking ball. Yeah. It's a it's a good good job at the plate by Triplett to kind of try to sit back on it, but just a lot of late break there on that pitch from Deuce. That's a nice breaking ball. That ball's hit the center field. And tracking it down is the center fielder, Troy Holman. So he's made contact three times and anything to show for it. Yeah, a couple of three flyouts and that one to first base. You So hit two, outs, hard. two outs in the inning. Braxton Ford will step in. Fly out and strike out for Braxton today. 277 hitter. That ball's hit up in the air to center field. That's hit a long way, but it's tracked down out there on a nice play by Holman. He runs it down in right center field. And we will go to the bottom of the fifth. It's still Parkway 4 and Fort Recovery 2. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. As we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, it's Parkway 4, Fort Recovery 2 on our scoreboard today, which is brought to you by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And the bottom of the order, number nine, Alex Dews, who had a single in his first appearance today. And then top of the order, Troy Holman and Reese Wendell. As Trent Rollins steps back in with a two-run lead. First pitch ball. Rollins hadn't been afraid to use the breaking ball on first pitches. Didn't go with it that time. Finds the dirt. See if he comes back to it on the 1-0. That pitch is low also, makes it 2-0. Indians need base runners, and Dews would be a good one to have. Ten stolen bases on the air. That pitch will go inside. It's ball three. They had the lead runner on back in inning number four in the person of Caden Greasy. And he was caught stealing. Yeah, twice so far tonight. They've been back in the first had the leadoff runner aboard. And that pitch is a four-pitch walk. So two plate appearances. Twice on base for Alex Dews. That's the third walk in the game given up by. Rollins and the left-handed hitting Troy Holman will step in he has walked both times he has been up today scored a run in the third inning on a double by Caden Holman 255 hitter nine RBIs and 13 runs scored this season for Troy Holman down two, nobody down here in the bottom of the fifth. Wouldn't be surprised if something's on here. But that is five consecutive pitches that have been outside the strike zone here in the fifth inning. And we're going to get a little movement towards the mound from Coach Neil Schaffner. While they do that, we're going to take a break. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. The Parkway Panthers make a pitching change. Trent Rollins pitched four innings plus. And they brought in Apollo Thomas, who has been the left fielder to pitch. And we're taking his place in left field is Carson Kirby. Is that correct, Gary? Yes, sir. Kirby, okay. a sophomore going out to left field. 
The runner on second base, of course, is the responsibility. Well, that's Dews. Run on first base. Run on first base. So Holman's got a 1-0 count to him. They threw one pitch to Holman, five straight balls from Rollins, and brought in Thomas. And he throws a second ball. That pitch is high. It's 2-0 on the count. Having thrown just one pitch to Holman, his responsibility does go to Thomas. That ball's hit foul at the plate. Ton of top spin on that ball. He's got just the bottom part and side one it all over the dirt home plate. Two and one's the count. Thomas had a very busy day today in left field. Yes, sir. Especially early on in the game. Yeah, in the first two innings, he had four putouts. The left-handed hitting Troy Holman. That ball's hit to the second baseman. It goes off his glove. It's going to be an E4. We'll put Holman on base and allow Dews to move to second. I told you he was on second here. <laughs> I just had him there a little early. I tell you, if that's the, that's the first error of the night for the Parkway Panthers, if it's a ball well that well hit, mm -hmm. that's the first error. It's been a pretty good night for you thus far. And that will bring Reese Wendell to step in. Fielder's choice and a fly out for him today. He squares the bunt, offers at it, and fouls it. Up and out of the zone. Just took a stab at it and just nicked it. It's tough for a catcher to try to read that ball when somebody's hanging out over the plate like that with a bat in your face. You're trying to track the baseball and make sure it stays in front of you so you don't get runners in Manson. Thomas looks. Here's the bunt attempt again. That one's going to be bunted in the grass and it goes foul. Good job by Harner to yes, hop sir. on that. Garrett to make sure it didn't get back into the field of play. A lot of spin on it. It was mm -hmm. starting to tail back towards that first baseline and he just wanted to make sure that he didn't sit idly by and let the bases get loaded on a, on a ball that just took a weird spin on him. Wendell back into uh, bat again. This time he's down in the count 0-2. Caden Holman is on deck. His double drove in two back in the third inning. Wendell, first team All-Mac performer, the only one in the game. It was the first team All-Mac. Pitch is high. One and two is the count. Still nobody out. Paul's foul back to the screen. Wendell's done a nice job tracking, timing up the pitch from Thomas after really just only getting to see him from the on-deck circle for one battery. He's been right on that baseball. One and two. Waited on that breaking ball and fouled it back. Yeah, again, timed it darn near perfect. Just. Uh, it's it's a, a nice spot to go to the breaking ball there for Thomas. See if you can't get him to change, thinking it's a fastball, and instead get a bender on him. But Wendell's been right on top of it. And again, he would have got him with a curveball that time. That's the first strikeout of the game, Garrett, today for Parkway pitching. Credit for recovery. Put the ball in play an awful lot here. So with one out, Caden Holman will step in. And really, that's a big strikeout, Mark. Now you get yep. you got runners at first and second. It's a force at any base. You get a ground ball, you couldn't get down to the inning. Thomas snaps off that breaking ball for a strike. Again, Panthers have not been afraid to go first pitch breaking ball. Confident in that, in that stuff. Holman's double drove in the two runs that Fort Recovery has scored today. That one's fouled back to the screen. A steady diet of curveballs. Yes, sir. In a situation where if you snap one off and it goes to the backstop, you get two runners in scoring position. So Thomas obviously confident in that pitch. Time called. Says Holman will step back. Garkey's on deck. 
and give Alex Dews a little bit of credit on second base. He's been dancing just a little bit, trying to draw a throw out to second base, trying to see if he can't make Thomas Balk coming into a high leverage situation here. Doing everything he can. Move up 90 feet. And he got him looking. Put a pitch on the outside part of the plate that Holman couldn't pull the trigger on. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Apollo Thomas. And Garkey will step in. Obviously confident in that curveball. Garkey to shortstop. Took an awkward swing at a pitch on the inside part of the plate. And when you're now when you're starting to expect her ball come in with an inside fastball, you, but you're expecting to break it instead, kind of come tailing in at you a little bit. That's a tough pitch for Garkey to do a whole lot with. Oh, and one. Back-to-back -back strikeouts have been the two outs of this inning for Parkway. And that's a breaking ball for a strike. And it's 0 and 2 and. Apollo Thomas has come in and pitched very, very well. See what he comes with an 0-2 here. Go breaking ball? It is. A hard breaking ball on the outside part of the plate was a ball, so it's one and two. Apollo Thomas. One and two is the count with two outs. Long look. That ball's hit up in the air. And the left fielder runs over and makes the catch. That catch was made by Carson Kirby, who stepped in not long ago. And Apollo Thomas comes in and does just what the doctor ordered. We'll go to the top of the sixth. With his team up four to two, you're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. We go to the sixth, Parkway coming to bat. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's, famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's while your catering needs. Lee's, famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. Parkway coming to bat with a 4-2 lead, and Garrett won. Apollo Thomas came in and slammed the door on him last inning. Yeah, it came in at a big spot where he ended up putting a, a runner on, uh, and two runners on, and came in, got the first two strikeouts of the night for the Panthers pitching staff. Alex Dews is the first pitch strike to Caden Barry. Caden is singled in two appearances today. Scored a run in inning number four. That's the last run scored in the game. And swings through that pitch. Strike two. The winner gets Marion Local on Friday night. WSN will be here. That game will air on Saturday. Breaking ball outside, one and two. Marion Local got there with the fine pitching performance from Parker Hess. Get scattered four hits over seven innings. Struck out six in a win. A foul ball opportunity as he fooled a bit on that pitch. Also got tracked this weekend on WOSN, the Division Two from Piqua, which is run Friday night, will air this weekend as well. And advance the state tournament next weekend. Yeah, next weekend. We're going to be down at the state tournament next weekend. Will WSN, did he get him? Yes, he did. It's a swinging strike. They throw down to first base and they get him out. So a strikeout swinging. That's the fourth strikeout today for Dews. And Xavier Samples will step in. Xavier singled in a couple of appearances today. Left-handed hitter, 212 hitter for the second baseman this year. As we're in the sixth. Good curveball for a strike. Yes, sir. It worked on the right-handed batter's box for a long time, but bent strongly right back over the heart of the plate for a strike. Fletcher Smith's on deck. Pitches outside. One on one's the count. Almost the same spot as the breaking ball entered the last pitch. Just didn't get the bite on that one that the snap had on the first one. Alex Dews in his sixth inning of work. Way outside with that one. Two and one. Dews, I think, really trying to work as 
efficiently as he can at this point in the game. He wants to have that ball in his hand as much as possible. Getting up on the pitch count. That's a fastball strike. It's two and two is the count to Samples. Smith has flied out twice who's coming up next, but the second one was a sack fly that got a run in. The ball's fouled. Staying two and two. Good piece of hitting by Samples to sit back on the breaking ball that time. Didn't get much of it, got enough to stay alive. And got him with a swinging strike that time. Swing right through that. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Dews. Strikeouts number four and five for him today. He had 57 of them coming into today in 53 and two-thirds innings. Now bring Fletcher Smith to the plate with two outs here at the top of the sixth. Yeah, Deuce came in with a 1.95 ERA. Been the, best, been the best pitcher all season for Minster. Or for four recovery, I beg your pardon. Averaged five strikeouts a game. Sitting there right now. Big slow breaking ball that time for a strike. It's one and one. Colton Harder is on deck. And he waved at that pitch, which was outside the strike zone, but a good sidearm breaking ball. One and two is the count. Dude is trying to strike out the side here in inning number six. Just missed with that one. That's a tough pitch to take. Say, that's a tough <laughs> pitch to watch. Right there on the outside corner. Didn't miss by a whole lot. But it was a ball. Good plate discipline there. That one is just tap foul. Big slow breaking ball that time. Alex News back to the plate. And that one was fastball, it's low. We'll go full count. He's walked just a single batter today. Obviously doesn't want to put one on the plate here. He put Colton Harner on plate, on base in the third, and Colton scored the first run of the game, and got him swinging, he struck out the side. Three up, three down for, for the Parkway Panthers here in the top of the sixth. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. To the bottom of the sixth inning we go. Our presenting sponsor today has been Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lime on Wapak Delphus and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken where home style happens here. To the bottom of the sixth, the Fort Recovery Indians go. That would be Caden Greasy, Kevin Fowler, and Reese Evers against an Apollo Thomas who pitched really well in the previous inning. Takes the ball on the first pitch. Five, six, seven hitters here for Fort Recovery. Second to last opportunity they'll have, conceivably. Fastball misses as well. Two and out. Thomas started the game in left field. He came in, had a run of reach on an error, and then went strikeout, strikeout, fly out. And it's three and oh. Indians need base runners, so obviously Greasy going to have the hardest and strongest red light you can imagine here on Trio. Singled his last at bat and was thrown out stealing. That would be back in inning number four, and he gets a four-pitch walk. It's the third time that I the Indians have drawn a four-pitch walk. Kevin Fowler, or Gavin Fowler, will come to hit. Fly out in a single for him today. 254 batter on the season for the first baseman. Thomas waits a long time. And we're going to get a time call. Fowler single came in the fourth inning after Greasy had singled and then was caught stealing. He made it as far as second base, but they're unable to get him home. High breaking ball. It's five consecutive pitches out of the strike zone. There is nobody in the Parkway pen. Now, Garrett, they may have been throwing down there when they were batting last yeah, inning. I didn't look down to see. Yeah. 
There's a strike. One and one's the count. Receivers on deck. Right fielder. Just checking on Greasy over there at first, just to make sure. Yep. Not napping. Is a threat to steal. Hasn't taken a huge lead yet. That breaking ball is on the inside corner for a strike. One and two. And he bailing out that time that we snapped that one off at his left shoulder and got it on the inside corner. Good stop behind the plate by Colton Harner. Pitch that was outside, it's 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, have to keep that runner in first base. No pass balls, no wild pitches here. Don't want to put a runner in scoring position with nobody down. A two-run lead. That one's off the catcher's glove. That's going to move him up and also run the count to full count. Just exactly what I said. Can't have happen. Can't put him in scoring position by fault of your own. Now it's a situation where you can have runners on first and second if you throw a ball here. And that will bring receivers to the plate. Full count. And inside, and he lost them. So back-to-back -back walks here to open up inning number six for the Fort Recovery Indians. Here comes receivers to the plate, a 212 hitter. He is 0 for 2 today. Fly out to the first baseman and a ground out. He'll chat with Fort Recovery head coach Kevin Eink. Want to make sure there's no no lost in translation on the signals of what's expected here in this plate appearance. Toby and Dews will hit after. Parkway thinking bunt. They've got the first baseman pulled in and the person of Braxton Ford. And he squares around and that pitch is outside. Fort recovery got burnt by the bunt and run back in the fourth inning. Had a leadoff hitter aboard. Caden Greasy got caught stealing after they couldn't get the bunt down. See if they're hesitant to do it again. Squares again. That ball is perfectly bunt. That is a great bunt. Here's the pickup in the throw. He beat it out. Thomas slipped coming off the mound trying to field the ball. Doesn't matter. Receivers put it in a perfect spot. And now the bases are juiced with nobody down. That was absolutely the perfect spot to put that one in. Garrett made the pitcher go a long way to get it. And that loads the bases on two walks and a hit and brings Toby to the plate. He's 0 for 2 today. And Riggs Toby, the catcher, he will step in against Apollo Thomas. Big time situation here. Nobody down. Bottom of the sixth inning of a two-run game. See how confident Apollo Thomas is in the curveball that he's thrown for strikes a couple of times. With the bases juiced, you can't worry about, you got to worry about putting one in the backstop and losing a run. Fastball strike. Outer half, it's a nice placement there on that first pitch to get the strike call. Thomas. That ball's hit. It's going to get past the second baseman. Here's one run to score. And they're going to hold the runner at third. On the flare by Reese Toby that plates Caden Greasy and moves everybody up a base. And makes it a 4-3 game with nobody out here in the sixth. Just playing it safe. Don't have to worry about a play at the plate. Don't want to make it out at home. Still nobody down here in the sixth inning. Full Deuces. recovery just puts the stop sign up yeah. at third base and says, we're not even going to take a chance here. Dews is one for one in a walk. The number nine hitter in the order, Troy Holman, sets on deck. Infield comes in for the Panthers. 4-3 game. And he takes the ball. That 
Pitch misses outside as well. It's 2-0. No place to put him. Alex Dews, who has pitched the entire game today, all six innings so far. Hitters count. And that pitch is also missed. It's 3-0. And no place to put him. Yeah, can't, can't walk here. Have to put something over the plate. Dews is a 234 hitter with nine RBIs on the season. And he's taken all the way. And he takes a strike. I'm not sure the hesitancy there. Dews wanted the ball call. It was over the heart of the plate at the bell. It was even a little taken off by Apollo Thomas to make sure he got it over the over the plate for a strike. Three and one. And he walked him. That brings in Gavin Fowler, and we're tied at four. And we go back to the top of the order, and Troy Holman headed to the mound. Coach Neil Schaffner. Well, Garrett, they're in a world of hurt now as they were tied. We're in the, in the bottom of the sixth. They've got bases loaded and nobody out. And just walked in a run. You, you, yep. If you, you got to make them earn it in this situation. And so I'm guessing that hey, we got to throw the ball over the heart of the plate. If we can get a double play, if we want to go, if it's a hard struck ball, come home with it. Otherwise, let's just try to get out of here without uh, with kind of mitigating your losses here a little bit. But you're right. Bases loaded, nobody down, and now a tie ball game is about worst case scenario in the bottom of the sixth inning for the Panthers. We have already discussed, Garrett, that the winner comes back on Friday night to play uh, Marion Local. That would be a six o'clock game. Then the winner of that district will move on to the Elida Regional. That semifinal will be on May 30th at 5 p.m. And they will play a team out of the Northwestern number one district. The number one seed there was Montpelier, but as this district has shown, number one seed teams have yeah. had, had a capacity to lose. And the finals in the regionals are May 31st. That's a 5 p.m. start. Thomas stays in the game. And bases loaded to the top of the order we go. Holman has walked, walked, and been on by an error. He scored a run in the third. 255 hitter with nine RBIs on the season. Thomas looks. And the breaking ball for a strike on the inside part of the play. I was Good just pitch. about to say, you got to wonder yep. if well, Thomas is working with a full arsenal here. If you got to worry about uncorking a fastball roll or uncorking a curveball, just rolling over the top of one and putting it behind the screen, but comes out first pitch curveball for a strike. It's a strong pitch in a tough situation here. And Holman calls timeout at the plate. It's about the third time that it's happened that it's been probably just a little bit too late, to be honest with you, where the pitcher is just starting to come plateward, and yeah. we've, we've called time. And, and I think that's what Schaffner's yeah, going right. to come out and say. Like, Coach Schaffner wants to discuss when that timeout was called and, why, and, and the, the legality of it, but also gives his pitcher a little bit of chance to compose himself a little bit. Good time to do it. I don't think it's an unfair conversation to come out yeah. and ask. It's a high-leverage situation, um, and you, you got to – just say like, hey, at some point when the pitcher's coming play where you can't you can't call time. Troy Holman step back in. Apollo Thomas on the mound. Curveball stays outside. It's one and one. I think you can psych yourself out in this situation where you're afraid of throwing a fastball for a strike because somebody might tattoo one and they uh, it's you're losing. I just got to rear back and throw it. The pitch is in the dirt and scoring from third base. That brings in Reese Evers with the third run of the inning and puts the front recovery Indians up now five to four. Heads up play by Evers. Track it the entire way. Once it bounced, he was taken off. And also moved both other runners up. Toby went to third. Dews went to second. Still and nobody that's out. That's just what you were talking about a moment ago, Garrett. You try to overthrow a pitch. It gets in the dirt and gets away from your catcher, Harner. And the wild pitch cost him a run. Still nobody out. And second and third. That pitch leans him back. It's three and one.
Now you do have a base open, but you don't want Reese Wendell coming to the plate with the bases loaded. The only first team all Mac performer for Fort Recovery coming to play debate with coming to the plate with the bases juiced. Pitches a strike at the top of the zone. We go full count. Reese Wendell is on deck. And he is 0 for 3 today with a run scored after he was on by fielder's choice. And he fouled that one back. Three and two is the count. Still nobody out. And he steps out again. Uh, I didn't see him step. I was looking at Thomas. I thought, oh, no, that he just balked. <laughs> and uh, that's about the worst thing it can have happen right now. That pitch is inside. It hit gets him. away. Hit him. It hit him. Hit him. It did hit him. You're right. Which, in a way, is fortunate, Garrett. Yeah, you, you, when those are your options. If it's a ball or it gets away or it hit him. You're going to take the HBB every time. Otherwise, that ball gets to the screen, and the runner from third in the position of, of Riggs Toby might have scored. Now we'll get another conversation. We'll see if maybe get another pitcher in. While they had this conversation to Mal, we're going to take a break. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And by putting three on the board here in the bottom of the sixth inning, the Fort Recovery Indians have taken a 5-4 to four lead over the Parkway Panthers. And they have brought in Braxton Ford, who had been playing first base to pitch. And Apollo Thomas moves to first base. Base is loaded still. Nobody out for Reese Wendell. That's a ball. Ford's got a motion that... Keeps that elbow kind of high and tight to the head. A little bit different than we've seen from the Parkway pitchers thus far. Four steps back off the mound. Of course, those three runners on base all belong to Apollo Thomas. Here's a look to third. No, he just faked it, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, you got to be careful yeah. in that situation. Got to make sure you disengage. Can't allow a run without throwing a pitch here. Can't allow a run without, can't allow a run from a ball, can't allow a run from throwing one away. That's outside. Get a little bit of reflection off the glass we're looking through here this evening. I didn't, wasn't sure they threw it or not. So my mistake on that one is 2-0 and is the count. And again, no place to put them. Forward, back to the plate. That ball's hit to the third baseman. There's a throw home and safe. Nope, didn't get him. Nope, pulled him off the bag. The throw was wide and that allowed Riggs Toby to score. And I'm looking to see how they called down the scoreboard. Obviously it's a fielder's choice plus. On the ground ball to third. And they called it an error on the throw. But Toby scored. That moves Dews up to, to third. Holman goes to second. And Wendell's on first. And Caden Holman will step in. He's got a double and a couple of RBIs today. That's a strike. Bases are still loaded and there's still nobody out. Here in the bottom of these six innings, it's gone as a rise as it can for the Panthers. It's a 6-4 game with four on the board here in this inning. That ball's lifted to right field, and it's going to fall. And he gets past it. away. There's one run. Here comes a second run. And Fort Recovery has broken it up and with an 8-4 lead. Two more RBIs for Holman on the single. As it allowed Alex Dews to score, it allowed Troy Holman to score. It sent Reese Wendell to third. And the ninth batter in the inning will hit, and that's Alex Garkey, and there is still nobody out. Nice batter in the inning is Alex 
Garkey steps in, swings through that pitch. Garkey today is 0 for 3. A couple of fly outs and a ground ball. Ford's pitch is outside. One and one. The ninth batter to hit in the inning. Six of them have scored so far. And what do we got? Oh, Tyler Shue at second got, base. Got a loose, loose lace at second. Give the Indians credit. They've earned some, they've earned some runs here. They've been selective at the plate, have made Parkway throw the ball over the plate. Panthers haven't done it. Pitch is low. And I, uh, Two and one. I, I'm not sure about the, the approach from the pitcher's mound from the Panthers. At some point, you just you got to throw strikes over the plate and make them, make them hit it, make them put it to where your guys are. Ball's fouled straight back. Still trying to get strikeouts and punch outs when you're just looking for an out here in this bottom half of the inning that has gone as poorly as you could imagine. I think you just got to rear back and start throwing fastballs over the plate. And if they if they pulverize them, they, they do. You're already you're already down in a spot. Pitch is low. We'll go full count on Garkey. Caden Greasy is on deck. He began this thing with a walk. And that's a walk. So Garkey gets a walk. The first one issued by Braxton Ford. And still with nobody out, it's Caden Greasy. And the bases are loaded again, Garrett. And still nobody out on the scoreboard. The 10th hit of the inning. That's a ball. Two and oh. Ford struggling to locate the fastball right now. Has missed low, missed wide. That one missed up and in. Three and zero. In danger of walking in a run. And Braxton four walked in a run. That will allow Reese Wendell to score. And Holman goes to third, Garkey to second. And all of a sudden, Garrett, well, maybe not all of a sudden, it has gone to nine to four, and the game has gotten away from the Parkway Panthers. I think that's the fifth walk of the inning. And the hit batter. So <laughs> yes. Gavin. Follower will step in. He walked also in this inning. That's his first pitch strike. Still nobody out. 254 batter. Nine RBIs for him on the season. It's a foul ball. Tardy swing on the handle. Braxton four back to the plate, and that one's hit foul. Kind of a defensive swing on a ball that was outside. Yeah, and an 0-2 count, just fighting off, trying to keep, uh, keep keep it alive, and try not to be the first out here in the inning when you're batter number 11. Foul it again. Right on, timing it up well. Yep. Receivers is on deck. He had a single in this inning. Scored a run. 
and struck him out. First strikeout for Braxton Ford and first out of the inning. Just the third strikeout today yeah. by Panther pitchers. Evers steps in. That one's hit up in the air. And after a long run, did he catch it or not? He caught it. Yes, he did. Fletcher Smith ran it down and made a catch in the outfield, and we got a hurt player. So we're going to get a sacrifice fly to the center fielder by Evers. He'll get an RBI out of it as Caden Holman scored. And let's see if everybody's okay. Looks that way. It's a long run for Fletcher Smith to come get that ball. Didn't have to worry about whether there was going to be a play to play or anything like that. Getting the out was the most important one. So we're going to... Uh, the third baseman came in. Berry and said maybe he left early. I'm not sure why he would have done that, seeing what happened in the outfield. Yeah. Pitches outside. The pinch hitter here, Garrett. This is number 13 has stepped in. Mason Diller, Jr. Thank you. Pitch for Toby, and he missed, swung on that pitch. Pitch hitter Diller. Toby was one for three today with an RBI and a run scored. That ball's hit up the middle, and that's going to be a hit. Will it score a run? Here They'll comes Garkey, and throws cut off. So Diller gets a hit. Garkey scores from third. And it goes to 11 to 4, and Garrett, all nine batters in this inning. Now obviously, Diller is a pinch hitter, but all nine batters have scored in the inning. So 10, well, yeah, so all nine batters. So, yeah, so they put 11 up. And that ball's in the dirt. Here comes another one. And Harner scoring couldn't find from third, it. Yeah. Scoring from third is Greasy. But it's the tenth run of the inning. And Dews is back at the plate while this is taking place, and we're headed to the mound again. About the single by Diller. You know, you step up off the bench in a game that's, that's two plus hours old, and line one out to the outfield. And the situation you're in now is you have to start talking about getting it out here to avoid putting butt runners on with the opportunity for a run roll. Exactly. Which you never thought in a four, you come into the bottom half of the inning with a 4-2 lead. And we're going to have the fourth pitcher of the game. That's Caden Berry. So Berry will step in. Rollins, Thomas, Ford, and now Berry in the game. Something to think about, too, as well for full recovery is... Alex Dews spent a lot of time on the base pass, yeah. hasn't, and is now coming up to hit, hasn't had a lot of time to keep that right arm loose after throwing six innings of baseball here, yeah, giving up, scattering four hits. Something to consider, think about going into the seventh inning. If we mercifully ever get to the seventh yeah, inning. Yeah, we do. Dews has, uh, was walked here in this inning. He's walked twice in the game and has a single. Scored a run earlier in the inning. You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for $8 per month. Download Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv. And we're looking at Caden Barry, who had been at third base. And will be the fourth pitcher of the game. 
is this 10 run inning that the Fort Recovery Indians have put up. And they still have a single out to record yet to the Panthers. The full recovery coming into tonight can scored 10 or more runs just three times throughout the season. Get one here in the district semifinals. Got to feel good about that for the Indians. As we're approaching the 10 o'clock hour, Garrett. And there's a strike. First pitch strike to Alex Dews from Caden Berry. Strike two. Barry not really overcomplicating things. Just, uh, just rearing uh, back and yeah. putting, it, here putting it, it over the plate. Yep. Pitch is high. One and two. I'm sorry, two and two is accounted. Now three and two. Perfect day going for Alex Dews with a single and a couple of walks today in the number nine hole. And struck out. Country hardball just blew it by him. Caden Berry comes in and gets the final out of the inning, but it was a 10-run sixth inning for the Fort Recovery Indians, and they will take a 12-4 lead to the seventh. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball, WOSN. To the top of the seventh we go. The Fort Recovery Indians put 10 runs on the board with just four hits in the bottom of the sixth inning, and they will take a 12-4 lead as we go to the top of the seventh and back to try to finish this one out. And close it out is Alex Dews. Giving up four runs today. Slow breaking balls hit up in the air, and the third baseman tracks it down. Caden Breezy. That was Harner who popped up to the third baseman for the first out. Here comes Ben Bates. Ben has a single and two at trips today. The designated hitter. Pitches outside for a ball. Yeah, I have to imagine conversation in the Panther dugout was, hey, let's, we need base runners however we can get them. I, I don't imagine swinging at the first pitch, pop it up. It's probably on the on the scouting report there for the seventh inning. Big slow breaking ball, the change up for a strike, levels the count at 1-1. One, one. We, Mark, we talked about Dews being maybe a little cold after, from that right arm perspective, after watching a lot of that sixth inning. That slow breaking ball stays outside, two and one. While that's true, he's got eight runs to kind yeah. of toy with here that if he you know, does start to get hit around a little bit, you can bring in somebody else. And I realize nobody's going to think that way, but you, you do have that wiggle room now because of the success. That pitch missed wide, it's three and one. Blew that fastball by him. Three and two. On the number nine hitter, we go to the top of the order, Apollo Thomas. After Bates bats. Foul ball. Just a nice cut there. Stay alive. Dude's trying to blow one by him right there on the inside half of the plate. See if he comes back with a fastball here in a full count. Or he tries to bend one a bit. I think that might have went off our umpire. He's yeah, just uh, walking around a little bit. Checking on, make sure everybody's all right. Three and two is the count with one out in the top of the seventh. That put stayed outside, and that is walk number two in the game. Given up today by Alex Dews. And we go to the top of the order in Apollo Thomas. News with six strikeouts to counter the two walks he's had today. Thomas, one of them back in the fifth. Big slow breaking ball, and that stayed high. Struck out once, walked once. Pitches a strike. Same pitch, better result. One and one. Mm -hmm. 
One out here in the top of the seventh. Ball's hit up in the air. Hits a long way and over his head. Over his head. It's going to be a double. The runner had to hold to see if it was going to be caught. And, and Reese Wendell. Yeah. Racing it back all the way to the wall. Looked like he might have had a bead on it, but you're right. Unfortunately for Ben Bates, had to tag up and instead of scoring, it's going to have to stand at third base after the double there by Thomas. So Thomas goes two for three on the day. Devin Crouch will step in. Devin's 0 for 3 in the game today. Runners on second and third now, and this is a single out here in the seventh. Got the yeah. RBI back in this third inning. Left handed the fielder's, crouch. Ch sorry, fielder's sorry. choice, sorry. Yeah. Breaking ball stayed outside. Pitch is also outside. Garrett, I see a little bit of stirring in the Fort Recovery bullpen area, and yep. I'm not sure it's. I, I'm wondering if you're getting close to his pitch count. Yeah, and it's not, there's not a much sense of urgency out in the bullpen. That's a strike. Two and one. Beautiful curveball. He broke that over chest high on the inside part of the plate. Levels the count at two and two on left hand hitting Devin Crouch. Just a great bender right over the heart of the plate. Fooled him. That ball's tapped to the shortstop. High bounce, the pickup made by Garkey, and did he get him? He's safe. He did not. The infield hit will go to Devin Crouch, and he gets another RBI. As Bates scores from third, and that will also allow Thomas to move up to third. And so we go first and third for Jacoby Triplett. Jacoby's hit the ball hard three times today. Doesn't have anything to show for it. Yeah, a couple of flyouts. To, uh, one to center field, one to left field, one to first base. But that one to first base was one of the hardest struck balls of the day. Yes. 262 hitter on the season. Fastball caught the outside part of the plate. Twelve to five. Fooled him completely. Really nice curveball pitch. And Toby and Dews are on the same page right now. Dews isn't shaking off anything. Toby puts down, just looks in, nods, and comes set. Oh, and two's the count. Sidearm breaking ball that time. Stayed inside. It's one and two. Braxton Ford's on deck. That ball's hit the short. Taylor made. Got one. Did he get two? Nope. Throw was a little bit tardy. Still knocked off the lead runner. Well, he's not the lead runner. Runner's headed to first and got an R got a score from Apollo Thomas to make it 12-6. And we're down to the last out of this one. Braxton Ford steps in. That ball's hit foul. Dues. Ball slapped up the middle. And off, off the, the glove. glove. Yeah. Yep. See how they call that one. That one becomes the fourth error of the game today for the Fort Recovery Indians. Yeah, that's a tough ball mm -hmm. range into second base from shortstop. Takes a tough hop. See if that's it for Dews or not. Well, and he's going to get a pat yep. on the back. Gets a pat on the back. And he's disappointed. He wants yeah. to finish that out. I completely understand. He, he's pitched a fine game today. I bet it was pitch count, Garrett. That's going to bring uh, Niemeyer in to pitch for him. We're going to take a break while they change pitchers. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN.
pitching change for the Fort Recovery Indians as they bring in Rex Leverett. Rex is uh, one and two on the season with a 2.30 earned run average in 21 and a third innings. He's given up 20 hits, eight walks. He struck out 24 batters in 21. Point one inning, 21 and third innings, and he will come in to close this one out. And Garrett, I can only imagine that that was a pitch count thing because you could tell the disappointment that uh, Alex Dews had. Yeah, absolutely. He scattered five hits over the course of six and two thirds innings. He's pitched a fine game and pitched strong enough to allow his team to come back and storm back to, to grab a big lead here in the, the top of the seventh inning. And then you, you want to finish what you started. You worked that hard to get to the finish line. You want to push it over. He will face uh, Rex Leverett will. Caden Barry. Caden is one for three today with a strikeout his last time up. That was in the sixth inning when Dew struck out the side. First pitch strike. Panthers down to their final out here in this district semifinal. Runners on first and second. Pitches outside, looking the outside part of the plate for his first two offerings to Barry. Wouldn't be surprised maybe if there was a, if we, if you pitch around him, if he gets on base, it's not the end of the world. That ball's hit foul, makes it one and two. Just and over the school bus. Rex Leverett trying to close this one out for the Fort Recovery Indians. Number six seed here in the district, trying to take on the number four seed, Marion Local, in the finals on Friday night. A tap foul. Parkway stays alive. Runner on second base, runner on first base, and curveball is wide. Two and two. Barry not trying to do too much at the plate, not trying to be a hero. Waiting for his pitch. That ball's hit up in the air to right field. And drifting back, drifting back, and nope. it's over the right fielder's head. Barry's going to get a double and Four score scores. a pair. Yes, he does. So Barry doubles in two runs. Triplet scores. Ford scores. And Garrett, it is an what 12 8 game now? Yeah, I give Parkway credit yes, for not absolutely not going quietly into the night. I was thinking the exact same thing. You have a, a disastrous top yeah. of the seventh inning, and you figure, oh, here we go. Yeah, that, and that bottom of the sixth goes the six, yeah, poorly, as, to poorly as you can go, and it'd be easy to fold up your tent and go home. But they've, they've battled a little bit here in the seventh inning, trying to come back. And here's Xavier Samples. First pitch is high. He will be the eighth Panther to bat here in this top of the seventh inning. Put that pitch in there. One and one's the count. Samples today has singled, struck out, rounded out in his three at bats. Left handed hitting second baseman. Pitch in the dirt. Two and one. Parkway hasn't really been all that aggressive at the plate here in this seventh inning. What? Poor recovery. Throw around the, around the zone. That's a swinging strike. A call it two and two. It's a nice pitch by Leverett. Took a little bit off of it. Put it right at the knees. Perfect placement, perfect pitch at the perfect time. Rex Leverett. Breaking ball wide. And we go to full count. And 
and he walked him. So Leverett issues the third walk this evening. Given up by a Fort Recovery Indian pitcher. And that will put samples on at first. Barry stays at second. And the ninth hitter of the inning, Fletcher Smith, will step in. 0 for 2 on a sack fly back in the fourth inning. RBI sack fly. That's the last run Parkway scored before coming into this inning. Ball one. That ball's grounded and into the hole. Stop and sign third. Hold the runner at third. That they do. So Fletcher Smith singles to load the bases. And that brings up Colton Harner. And to the mound goes Coach Kevin Ike. And that will mean that uh, Colton Harner will bat for the second time in the inning. He began the inning by popping up to the third baseman. On the very first pitch he saw, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. He has walked today and been on uh, been, uh, been off base twice, struck out in that pop-up we just talked about a moment ago. And did we get a pitching change? No, we nope. did not. Okay. When the coach was going to make a change, he did yeah, not. Yeah, that was a real, sh it was a very short. <laughs> yes, hey, it was. Hey. Rear back throw strikes here. It's 12-8. It's been a four-run inning for Parkway. Leverett throws a first pitch strike to Harner. Base is loaded. Two outs. Foul ball. 0-2 is the count. Down to the last strike. Ben Bates hoping to get one more at bat today. In the on deck circle. That ball's hit to center field. And hit right to the center fielder, Troy Holman. And that will bring this one to an end. The Fort Recovery Indians put 10 on the board in inning number six. They survive a four-run seventh inning from Parkway and will take a 12-8 victory. And, Garrett, it was an offensive baseball game, and we thought it wasn't going to be. Yeah, we talked about, you know, being a 2-1, 3-2 pitcher's duel. It ends up being a 12-8 game where you get to a, a spot where both, Scott, both squads, bottom of the sixth, top of the seventh, Name of the game, throw the ball over the plate, and both struggled to do it in those half innings. And you get to a point where full recovery in that bottom of the sixth inning just said, hey, make them beat us. Make them throw the ball over the plate. And for Parkway, you know, you give up, I think, what was it, four hits in the inning? You mm -hmm. gave up ten four. runs. Yep. If they pound the ball and they score ten, ten runs on ten hits, it's just one of those just one of those deals that they're the better team. But uh, it's going to be one of those that if we had just thrown the ball over the plate, if we could have got it out here, it, it's going to be one of those what could have, would have, should have been. But give for recovery, all the credit in the world, you're able to rattle off that many runs with nobody out time and time and time again. You get 13 guys to the 14, 15 guys to the plate in one inning. You've earned everything you got. Parkway, eight runs, six hits, two errors. They left six on base today. Fort Recovery, 12 runs, eight hits, four errors. They left six on base as well. And Fort Recovery will be here on Friday night to play the Marine Local Flyers, and so will we. I want to thank our sponsors today, the Wabash Mutual Telephone, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Thank the athletic director here, Mr. Eric Goodwin. Megan Sherrick and Abby Beck have been outstanding today, and they've got a lot of work to do, Gary, before they can even go home. Mary, Megan will edit the first game, Nick, Nick Fred will edit the second, and that second game will be a victory for the Fort Recovery Indians over the Parkway Panthers, and they will move to the district finals. The final score, 12-8. You've been watching high school tournament baseball on WO. Yes, and...